Um, so now I'm going to lump together Parkinson's and Lewy body. And um, Lewy body is, 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 is basically fascinating. And the way you could tell the difference between Parkinson's and Lewy body is easy. It's a history. You know, Lewy body people don't have Parkinson's disease. Somebody who has Parkinson's disease, they don't start off with memory difficulties. They develop it six, seven years along the road. And so the symptoms and how they present are very much in common, but, but you, you should be able to tell them apart pretty easily. So in Parkinson's disease, this is a, a, a stain of the brain, stained for dopamine. And the black part is dopamine. And you can see that there's almost none here. And so this is somebody with advanced Parkinson and all the dopamine producing cells have died. And this is the, the classic Lewy body we see in, in, in Lewy bodies. And we all get Lewy bodies and we all get amyloid plaques. It's the degree that they, that, that they get. And so both of these are neurological diseases and they, they end up presenting um, uh, the, the same way. Um, there are very sophisticated testing we can do with this alpha synuclein, but I'll tell you the way we really diagnose this is, is based on the history. And anybody who's seen anybody with Lewy body, you know, will never, ever, ever forget it because it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a classic presentation. Unfortunately, a lot of doctors have never even heard of it. And this is a slide from 1984 that I'll just read. Contrary to published reports, most patients with Parkinsonism who exhibit dementia do not have concomitant Alzheimer's disease. Some pathogenic mechanisms must be sought to account for this increasingly common cause of cognitive decline in the sufferers of Parkinson's disease. This was in 1984. So not too long ago, we thought if a Parkinson's patient developed memory difficulty, that they had Alzheimer's. And so now you're giving them two diseases, and what we know that they actually have is that they have Parkinson's disease, and then they've gone on to develop Parkinson's uh, dementia. And one of the reasons you want to recognize Lewy body is because Lewy body responds better to the cholinesterase inhibitors than Alzheimer's. It has the largest deficit of uh, cholinesterase. So these people do wonderful on medicines like Aricept and Exelon. Um, they really do wonderful. And so you want to recognize them. And, and this is the, the, the true Harvard way of doing dementia because we spend all this time diagnosing it and almost always the treatment's the same. <laughs> and so you could take somebody who has no idea what they're treating and they could be treating it properly without knowing what they're actually treating because they hear memory difficulties and all of a sudden they, they put them on a cholinesterase inhibitor. So they end up with a colon, cholinergic deficit, but in Parkinson's the disease, it's the Lewy body and it's in different parts of the brain. Here it's the, the plaques and tangles, but the end result is the same is acetylcholine gets depleted and that's what's important to, to, to make new memories. Um, so somebody who has Parkinson's dementia, they have Parkinson's and they have it for many years. If you see somebody who's got a lot of cognitive difficulties and they have a little bit of Parkinson's, they probably don't have Parkinson's dementia. They've had Parkinson's for years, they've been treated for it for years. And again, it tends to be a subcortical uh, type of illness. And on memory tests, when you want to know the difference between Alzheimer's and, and, and Parkinson's or Lewy body, the difference between cortical and subcortical really gives you a diagnosis. And so the, what I do is I give them something called list generation. And I tell them to make believe they're in a supermarket and they're in a fruit and vegetable aisle. And I time them for a minute. And I say, tell me all the fruits and vegetables you could think. And then, I give them a little bit of break, and now I say, I want you to tell me all the words you can think of that begin with the letter F. And then what I do is I say, no proper names, and I say, so you can't say Frank or Frankfurt, Germany, and then I go. And somebody who has Alzheimer's disease gets six fruits and six on the F list. So both of them are impaired. Somebody who has a subcortical dementia, such as Parkinson's or Lewy body, they, on a fruit and vegetable, they get 15. Then you give them the F list and they get two. And because it's using different tasks of the brain, they struggle so much more. And you do that and it's classic. And I'd love to tell you that it's, it's, it's always easy because sometimes people have had strokes and there's other things that confuse the picture. 
But when you have a pure Alzheimer's versus a Parkinson's dementia versus a Lewy body, the memory tests are, 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 are strikingly uh, a, a difference. So in early Parkinson's, the cognition is fine, and as it progresses, they start to de develop it. You know, and studies have showed that about 30% of them will get it in their costs, and then by the, in the end stages of Parkinson's, about 80% of them will get um, dementia. The hard thing is the neurologist pays attention to the Parkinson's, the walking, the, the postures, and a lot of times, because it's, it takes so long for a Parkinson's patient to get the words out, the doctor's in a hurry, they don't bother checking their memory. And I, I have one at, at Terry Trina Grand in advanced Parkinson's, and sometimes there may be 50 seconds between words. And it, they're there, but you gotta be weak. And it, that's not his dementia, that's the Parkinson's. He can't get going. And once he gets going, he can get off a sentence or two, but then he, if he stops, if anything stops him, it may be another 30, 40 seconds before he gets another uh, a, a sentence out. So this is classic of Parkinson's dementia, but more classically of Lewy body. And all this shows is red, green, yellow, little people. Anybody who has Lewy body dementia, they get the most vivid hallucinations you could imagine. And a lot of times it's animals, and a lot of times it's little people. And I remember a, a gentleman who I took care of in Boston, and it was the first case of Louis body I ever saw, and he would talk about these little people who lived in his house. And they had green hats, and they had orange socks, and they were having an affair with his wife, but he was okay with it. <laughs> and it's, you see that, and he's not psychotic, and then they, they have uh, features of Parkinson's, so they may have the, the flex posture, they may walk like this, um, and it's, it's, it's a classic presentation of Louis body. The other thing is they have days where you say, there's nothing wrong with them, and then there's days that are so bad, so they have this waxing and waning pattern. Somebody who has Alzheimer's dementia, you may get a little bit of variation from day to day, but in Lewy body, it's, it's absolutely dramatic, the difference. Some days you may think they're normal, and some days it's so severe. But classic is these hallucinations, little people, little animals, brightly colored. You hear that, you want to be thinking uh, Lewy body dementia. Um, sometimes they're distorted, um, but a lot of times, you know, they're normal sized people, but you may get you know, a horse head on a person's body. You could get some of these really vivid. And then sometimes there's a misperception. There was one of our uh, patients, the son would be coming in the evening, would give shadows. And then he would misinterpret the shadows as different things. That's a little different than, than hallucinations. Um, and again, the, the cognitive fluctuation is really key. The caregiver will tell you there's good days and there's bad days. You don't always hear that with Alzheimer's disease. You hear that some days a little bit better, some days a little bit worse. They have a lot of daytime drowsiness. They get a lot of sleep-wake cycle uh, disturbances. The key with Lewy body is these hallucinations are usually not scary at all to the patient. And there's no reason to give them antipsychotics. You just need to assure the, the caregivers, the wives, the kids that it's okay because they're the ones who want the hallucinations to go away. And then the way we get rid of the hallucinations is we give antipsychotics. And antipsychotics are anti-dopamine. And people who have Lewy body and who have Parkinson's dementia, they're already dopamine deficient. So you could make their primary illness much worse. And very rarely, you, have, you don't have to treat them. Most people, once the family hear that, just ignore the hallucinations. Um, and some people nickname the people and, 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 and whatnot. Um, you know, and, and it's just the, the antipsychotics you don't want to use unless you absolutely have to. And older people, they're associated with increased risk of stroke um, and you know, diabetes and a whole bunch of other things. There are times when they need to be needed but a lot of times in, in Lewy body, they did not need to be uh, needed. The hard part about Parkinson's dementia is that you can get hallucinations from dopamine. And a, a, an easy way of thinking about uh, schizophrenia and Parkinson's disease, this is oversimplified. 
But Parkinson's disease is a lack of dopamine. Schizophrenia is too much dopamine. So somebody with Parkinson's disease, we're giving them dopamine, and you can see how it's easy to push them towards the schizophrenic side. And they can start hallucinating. And the hallucinations may not be Lewy body, the hallucinations may be related to the dopamine, the cinnamon, whichever uh, dopamine agent you have them on. And then the treatment is give them less of it. And so sometimes it can be more complicated than somebody who has Parkinson's to kind of figure out whether it's the medication or whether there's something else going on. Um, all right, so the epidemiology, um, 20 to 40 percent of patients with Parkinson's will develop dementia. And again, cumulatively, as the disease goes on, um, it'll be 80 percent. And that's why it's always much better to, to get Parkinson's when you're 90. You know, if you get it when you're 50, you're probably going to live long enough that you're going to start having some uh, cognitive issues. Um, Lewy body, because we have some more sensitive stains, we see a lot more. The, the incidence is, is probably overreported in some studies, underreported in other studies, depending on how they're looking at it. Um, but it's, some people will say it's the second most common dementia, but it's, it's probably somewhere around the fourth most common dementia. Um, and it's, it's really, uh, they do well on the cholinesterase in, inhibitors, but also you really need not so much to treat the patient, you need to treat the family and tell them it's okay to have these hallucinations. It's okay. And then a lot of times it becomes a lot easier to treat.